This is one of four videos on thinking procedurally. In this video, we discuss identifying the components of a solution. In this video, we cover how to identify the components of a solution. If you've not yet seen it, we suggest you watch our video on how to identify the components of a problem first. So in the previous video, we looked at how to identify the components of a problem by breaking it down and creating a top-down modular design or structure diagram. The next step in the process is to identify the components required to produce the solution. So let's consider the structure diagram for the wages program that we saw in the previous video. Each box represents a component that needs to be designed in order to produce the overall solution. We need to look at each component and ask questions like what data is required to solve this problem? What on-screen visual elements are needed, if any? Look at each subtask and figure out what is required to solve it. What data do we need? What on-screen elements? And are there any additional subtasks that you could split it into? Let's start by considering the subtask get employee details. So here's one suggestion of an example of a user interface for the task of obtaining the employee's details at the start of the program. Looking at the interface, we can see several elements that we will need to produce to get this part of the solution working. Need some sort of cancel and create buttons to submit the data or cancel the form. Descriptive labels so the user knows what to put in each section. There's text input boxes, drop down selection fields. There's a handy can calendar lookup function on the date field. We've got the concept of required fields, fields that would be mandatory, a free flow notes field and some form of descriptive title to this screen. With this information, it can be easier for us to spot other design techniques we can use. We could use code reuse via the buttons or the calendar selection component. And we can start to spot various validation techniques we might need. For example, not allowing empty strings on the mandatory fields. To recap, start by breaking down the problem into a top-down structure diagram so each part can be tackled more easily. Then take each part and work out how to solve it and identify the elements you need to make it work. So a quick note from the exam board, the OCR clarification document also states, candidates may be given some component parts and be asked to complete these from a written description or pseudocode for a program. So you may in the exam be given a description of what a finished program should do alongside a complete or partial screen diagrams, algorithms, flowcharts, code elements, or various procedure or function stubs. You would then need to use these components to produce a working solution to the problem. Having watched this video, you should be able to answer the following key question. What do we actually mean when we talk about identifying the components of a solution? To help get your head around everything to do with computational thinking, we have a freely available downloadable cheat sheet. It's got two sides to it. There's a basic poster that reminds you at a top level what the five different strands are. And on the back, there's a much more detailed explanation. This resource is completely free from student.craigandave.org. Just scroll down and select the section that says A-Level Revision. You'll then see a section called OCR, AS and A-Level, and there's a number of cheat sheets in there, including two versions of the computational one. Just click Download to get the zip file. 